Good morning, everyone. This is TransConnect, July 2025. I am Dr. Mohit Chaudhary, and today we'll be talking about a very important topic that is acute transfusion reaction and approach to it, and the differential diagnosis associated with this acute transfusion reaction. We'll be having a series of episodes now. First episode will be acute transfusion reaction, uh, the approach followed by specific transfusion reaction, uh, namely the acute hemolytic transfusion reaction followed by transfusion transmitted bacterial infection, which are actually a differential diagnosis of transfusion reaction. So this approach would be all symptom based, how a patient will present to us with various symptoms. And then thereafter, we will have to apply where the which category the patient is going to fit in. And that will depend upon the signs and symptoms that the patient has. So over to Dr. Shafina, who's going to first take you to a broad uh, overview of approach to acute transfusion reaction and then we'll have the subsequent episodes which we'll be covering in the next uh, uh, next uh, presentation so over to dr shafina for this lecture good morning to all i am dr shafina so today i will be discussing the topic and approach to acute transfusion reactions so blood transfusions are life saving but at the same time they may also be associated with some kind of adverse event so an adverse event is an unintended and deleterious occurrence associated with blood component transfusion so this may occur before during or after transfusion so appropriate use of the component and careful monitoring of the patient during the transfusion is very important for the prompt diagnosis and prompt management of the acute transfusion reactions. So International Society of Blood Transfusion have proposed standard definitions for the surveillance of non-infectious adverse events and they are uh, classified it into adverse incident and adverse reaction. So adverse incident is an any any error affecting the quality or effectiveness of the blood product or it is leading to an adverse reaction to a transfusion recipient whereas adverse reaction is any harmful effect observed in a transfusion recipient that is temporarily associated with a blood component blood component transfusion next is classification of transfusion reaction so we can classify the reactions into acute and delayed types in acute the reaction is occurring within 24 hours of transfusion whereas delayed is more than 24 hours or after 24 hours of the transfusion. All the reactions can be immune and non-immune. In acute, the immune mediated transfusion reactions are hemolytic transfusion reaction, febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction, trally and allergy and anaphylaxis and non-immune acute are the transfusion associated circulatory overload, sepsis and hyperkalemia and these are the delayed uh, transfusion reactions. So in today's episode, we will be dealing with the acute transfusion reactions. These are the very important nine differential diagnoses of acute transfusion reactions. They are acute hemolytic transfusion reaction, anaphylaxis, transfusion related sepsis, febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction, transfusion associated acute lung injury, then transfusion associated circulatory overload, air embolus, transfusion associated dyspnea and hypotensive transfusion reaction. This is our approach on diagnosing acute transfusion reaction based on the signs and symptoms of patient. So when there is an acute transfusion reaction, so the patient is uh, presenting with fever with or without chills and rigor along with acute onset of dyspnea and hypotension. Then we have to suspect trally, sepsis and hemolytic transfusion reaction. So when there is a dyspnea which is of acute onset within 6 hours and also there is a chest x-ray showing bilateral pulmonary edema, hypotension and with or without the fever we have to suspect transfusion related acute lung injury. And if there is no uh, bilateral pulmonary edema but the culture of the patient and the component culture is showing the same organism from patient and component and also it is a rapid onset of the reaction then it will be sepsis. And if there is a respiratory problem, hypotension and also the bag, uh, ba the bag and also the patient sample is showing signs of hemolysis and the direct antiglobulin test is positive, antibody screen is positive, then it will be hemolytic transfusion reaction. But if the patient is presenting with fever, 
but there is no respiratory distress or hypotension and it, then it can be a febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction so this febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction is actually a diagnosis of exclusion and usually it will occur within 4 hours of the transfusion so the, there is only fever without any other signs and symptoms next if the acute transfusion reaction is presenting with fever and respiratory problem but instead of hypotension if there is hypertension and that can be transfusion associated circulatory overload so the time period is within 12 hours of transfusion the patient will be presenting with hypoxemia in x ray it will there will be pul bilateral pulmonary edema raised jvp orthopnea and also raised bnb and the patient will respond well to diuretics so there will be a confusion between the trali and taco so we have to rule out with the these signs and symptoms and then it will be uh, transfusion associated circulatory overload if the patient is presenting with respiratory distress but within 24 hours and there is no other signs of uh, bp change or if there is no bilateral pulmonary edema then it can be transfusion associated dyspnea this is also a diagnosis of exclusion now there is acute transfusion reaction but there is no fever then it can be anaphylaxis so in anaphylaxis there will be uh, urticaria angioedema bronchospasms stridor abdominal pain and there may be hypotension and the signs and symptoms will be within 4 hours but there will not be any fever and then again if there is without fever a transfusion reaction next possibility is air embolus so in air embolus there is acute onset of cyanosis cardiac arrhythmia along with that hypotension and cough will be there next possibility of transfusion reaction without fever is hypotensive transfusion reaction so this is also a diagnosis of exclusion so this uh, the signs of the hypotensive transfusion reaction occurs within 1 hour and there we can see a systolic bp will be dropping to more than 30 mm hg and all the B systolic bp will be less than 80 mm hg so this is our approach of diagnosing the acute transfusion reaction with the, with the signs and symptoms so here we have diagnosed the old uh, nine possibilities of acute transfusion reaction so this flowchart we have taken from rosy it is mainly for the differential diagnosis of respiratory related symptoms so when there is acute onset of dyspnea but there is no saturation drop to uh, less than 90 percentage so then it is most probably of transfusion associated dyspnea but here we have to rule out trali and taco then if there is a acute onset of dyspnea within 6 hours with a saturation drop to less than 90 percentage but the chest x ray but in chest x ray there is no pulmonary edema then it is transfusion related other causes like anaphylaxis septic shock or pulmonary embolus but if there is a saturation drop to less than 90 percentage with bilateral pulmonary edema in chest x ray then we have to suspect trali and taco so if the patient is having evidence of fluid overload with raised bnb or nd pro bnb then it is transfusion associated circulatory overload but there is no rise of bnb or there is no evidence of fluid overload but the chest x ray showing pulmonary edema then we have to suspect trali so the trali can be type 1 or type 2 if the patient was already at a risk of acute lung injury then it is type 2 and if it is a new onset that in be then it will be trali type 1 so we will be discussing about trali in the further uh, episodes next is clinical evaluation and management of a transfusion reaction so it is a two pronged investigation including a proper clinical evaluation of patient along with the laboratory verification and testing so the clinical team should discontinue the transfusion and conduct the blood bank for direction on the investigation this is the management of a transfusion reaction so when we are suspecting a transfusion reaction then first is the patient focus step stop the transfusion immediately that is the first step then maintain the iv access of the patient by flushing with saline in the bedside itself we have to do the clerical checks then consult the uh, clinical team or the, with the help of the in, uh, intensivist we have to make a plan of care for the patient now evaluate the patient and treat as needed next is a component focus step so the clinical team should consult or conduct the transfusion service for directions and investigations and for the documentation then they should obtain instruction from the blood bank uh, on return of the component and the other details then the transfusion service should determine whether to notify the blood donor center 
Next in the blood bank, these are the investigations we should follow. So we can request the return of remaining component and the post transfusion blood sample from patient. Then at the blood bank, we have to do a clerical check, visual inspection of pre and post transfusion patient sample and also the bag. Then we have to check for the evidence of hemolysis. Then repeat the ABO testing of the patient and also the blood bag. Then direct antiglobin test on the post transfusion sample. And the blood bank doctor or the supervisor can request for the additional test depending upon the clinical scenario of the patient. Now we have to notify our findings to the primary clinical team and we have to uh, generate a transfusion report and that should include interpretation of the transfusion reaction and also the recommendations for the future transfusions. Thank you for watching and kindly let us know your comments and feedbacks. Thank you.